the most common way of studying the Bible is to use a simple concordance and study the Bible in the English language. I have discovered over the years that the true wealth of the Bible is hidden in the expanded application of the original languages. For this reason, I never conduct word studies in the English language, but I access the treasures of the original tongues with the research tools available. The secret to a successful Bible research project is organization and proper study habits. Diligence and tenacity are the necessary attitudes needed to be successful in Bible research. Let's eradicate the idea that a research project is a study completed in 30 minutes start to finish. Some research projects might require weeks or even months to complete. Each word study project should have three parts, an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. Each of these parts are designed to organize your study time and meditation. In order to have a successful project, you must complete a thorough introduction. A thorough main body is built on a thorough introduction. The success of your conclusion is totally dependent on the thoroughness of your main body. In simple terms, each part of the research project is interdependent on each other. Should you be sloppy in one section, that sloppiness will affect the entire project. The remainder of this episode is designed to teach the word study format. Before we begin explanation of the word study introduction, let's scan the word study worksheet. This worksheet is designed to organize your Hebrew or Greek word studies. Again, each word study project should have three parts, an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. And this worksheet is designed to organize these three parts. The first step of a Hebrew or Greek word study is to prepare a word study introduction. The success of a Bible research project is seriously influenced by the quality of introduction you do. Should you rush through the preparation of your introduction, the entire project will reflect your lack of diligence and patience. The word study introduction is designed to control subject wandering. Think of one or two sentences which accurately describe the goals and the direction of your study. Often presenting your thesis statement in the form of a question is an excellent way to define the goal of your topic. The key to preparing a simple but thorough thesis statement is meditation. Spend a few moments defining the goal, objective, and parameters of your research project. For example, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Let's say that while reading this verse, you notice that the knowledge of the holy is understanding, and you wanted to know what kind of knowledge this might be. To research this topic, you would conduct a Hebrew word study on the word knowledge in this verse. You take out a blank word study worksheet and spend a few moments constructing a topical thesis statement. Under the subtitle of Topic Thesis Statement, you might record this topical question. In Proverbs 9.10, mention is made of the knowledge of the holy. What type of knowledge is referred to in this verse? Notice that your topical thesis statement Set the goal, objectives, and parameters of your study. Your objective is to understand the type of knowledge referred to in this verse. Your statement also limited your study to only one word. Notice that you are not studying, holy, understanding, or fear of the Lord. A good topical thesis statement must set clear goals and parameters. The second step is to open your Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to the English word 
or words under consideration. Identify the Hebrew or Greek words needed to construct your study topic. Record the Strong's number on your worksheet in its appropriate place. Should your research project examine more than one Hebrew or Greek word, then conduct a separate word study on each word and use a separate worksheet. Open your Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to the appropriate Hebrew or Greek dictionary found in the back of the book and locate your study number. Identify the proper transliteration and record it in its appropriate place. Please remember, a transliteration is a representation of a letter or word by the alphabetic characters of another language. A transliteration is not a translation. At this time, you might also consider including the phonetic transcription to aid you in pronunciation. The third step in your word study introduction is to establish the etymology of the Hebrew or Greek word being studied. It's important to clarify the etymology of the word being studied because the history of the word can influence your understanding of its meaning and application. While in the Hebrew or Greek dictionary, read the first few words in your study word definition. These words will be your etymology. Turn to your etymology reference number or numbers in the appropriate Hebrew or Greek dictionary and read carefully the etymology of your word. Record its definition in the space provided on the worksheet. While you are researching the etymology of your word, be sure to carefully meditate its definition and the implications it has on your study. You might record an observation similar to this from 3045 Yadah. To know, to ascertain by seeing, including observation, recognition, care, to know by experience, to see, to observe with the eyes to what we hear with the ears. This would be a good time to consult other Hebrew or Greek lexicons or concordances. The fourth step in your word study introduction is to establish the definition of the Greek or Hebrew word being studied. Again, let's refer back to the Strong's Hebrew or Greek Dictionary. After you have read the preliminary etymological information, the next words you read compile a simple definition. But you must pay careful attention to the colon and dash symbol, because it indicates the end of the definition and the beginning of the various ways your word is translated in the King James Version of the Bible. As useful a tool as the Strong's Concordance is, you will find that other lexicons are needed to establish an accurate definition. It is at this point the Strong's numbering system has its greatest value. Many Greek and Hebrew study aids are coded to the Strong's numbering system. In compiling the definition of our study example of Da'ath, I also consulted the Jacenus Hebrew lexicon and Brown, Driver, and Briggs Hebrew definitions from PC Study Bible. Once you have reviewed these entries, record your collated observations under the subtitle of definition. You might record a definition similar to this example. Knowledge, used as knowledge of God, intelligence, understanding, wisdom, to be possessed of wisdom, to acquire knowledge, by intimate experience with God. When compiling Hebrew or Greek definitions, there are three degrees of expanded applications. These degrees are basic, primary, and applied definitions. By using the sample definition of Da'ath, let's define the three degrees of expanded definitions. The term basic indicates the simplest form of the definition. When you examine a definition, the basic definition is an exact word-for-word -word translation. For example, when you consider da'ath, the basic definition is knowledge. The primary definition is an expanded form of the basic definition. Usually the primary definition amplifies the basic translation to include the actual implications of the word. 
Often the primary definition will include the practical and figurative applications of the word. Again, let's refer to da'ath. The primary definition is used as knowledge of God, intelligence, understanding, wisdom. It should be obvious that the primary definition is a concise and vivid application of your study word. The applied definition is an implied form of the basic and primary definitions. Your applied definitions consist of the various applications of the word as it is used in the scriptures. In simple terms, your applied definition is the scriptural application of your study word. Again, let's refer to da'at. The applied definition is to be possessed of wisdom, to acquire knowledge by intimate experience with God. Do not get hung up with these various degrees of definitions. If they confuse you, don't worry about them. Definitions may vary as you read from lexicon to lexicon. Because of these variations, I have a policy that two or three witnesses are necessary to solidify an accurate definition. The final step you need to do in order to complete your word study introduction is to consider the different translations that affect your theme word. When you study in the original languages, you will find that one Hebrew or Greek word can be translated by several English words. For example, the Greek word logos is translated by 23 different English words. Some of these words are to cause, to communicate, to give account, to think, to talk, to reason, or to question. You can see that by identifying the various ways your study word is translated can seriously influence the direction of your study. To finish step five, identify the various ways your study word is translated into the English language. There are two tools you can use to help identify your translations. The first tool is the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, and the second tool is the Englishman's Hebrew or Greek Concordance. To use the Strong's to identify your translations is a little more difficult and time-consuming than using an Englishman's Hebrew or Greek Concordance. In order to use the Strong's, you must reference each word that appears after the colon and dash symbol in the main concordance, because these words are the various English translations used in the King James Version of the Bible for your study word. The easiest way is to purchase an Englishman's Hebrew or Greek concordance coded to the Strong's numbering system. Look up your Strong's number and scan the list of scriptures identifying your translations. You may accomplish the same function by using Bible study software or the internet. Once this is accomplished, record this information on your worksheet. You might record a statement similar to this example. The most common derivative of yada. This word is used 90 times in the Old Testament. Da'ath is correctly translated knowledge, unawares, ignorantly, unwittingly to know. To conclude this section on the word study introduction, I wish to present some helpful hints that will increase the productivity of your study time. Number one, be patient and thorough with the preparation of your word study thesis statement. A properly prepared introductory statement will prevent subject wandering. It will also channel your thoughts and meditations toward the development of your conclusion. Number two, keep a notepad near you when you study. Often, while you meditate a scripture, the Holy Spirit will give you illumination that does not correlate with your study. Record these insights on your notepad because now you have the foundation for other studies. Number three, the secret of successful Bible research is meditation. In order for this study format to produce its best results, you must meditate every facet of your study. If you have not viewed episode four entitled Bible Meditation, please do so. 
without understanding the principles of Bible meditation, you will frustrate your study project. And number four, always consider the importance and influence that history, culture, and geography might have on your scripture or definition. Correlate this information with your study. Once you have completed your introduction, you are ready to observe its usage in the volume of God's Word. In order to accomplish this task, you need to rescan all the scriptural references in the Bible where your study word appears. Remember, your study word should be in Hebrew or Greek, and therefore you need a concordance or computer software that will list its scriptural references according to the Bible's original languages. With your Hebrew or Greek concordance or computer software open to your Strong's number, slowly scan every reference. Make note of every scripture that helps answer or clarify your word study thesis statement. Once you have identified the references you will use in your study, take the time to meditate each reference, considering the influence it has on your introduction. Remember, as you scan your list, you will be looking for cause and effect. In the main body section of your Word Study Worksheet, begin recording your selected scriptures on your worksheet. Record your scriptural references under the heading entitled Reference. Adjacent to your reference, record a brief excerpt from your scripture indicating how your study word is used in this verse. This information should be recorded under the heading of quotation. The final thing you do with your study passage is to meditate it with the various meditation techniques presented in episode 4. When you have completed your meditation, briefly record the insights and conclusions you acquired. These conclusions should be recorded under the heading of Meditations Insights. Remember, the insights you record should be what you received in meditation. Do not record another person's theology. When you meditate each passage, always consider the implication your passage has on your introduction. Proceed through your list of references and collate your meditations with your introduction. Now it should be obvious why you must take the time to build a proper introduction. Without a properly prepared introduction, the success of your main body will be limited. In simple terms, should you build a thorough introduction, you will be able to build a thorough main body. Let's review two examples. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. To learn this type of knowledge, we must first learn to fear the Lord. Proverbs 8.13 Notice that I included in my meditation, in parentheses, other scriptures that supported this conclusion. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22 Fools hate knowledge. Proverbs 1.29 Foolish ignorant people set themselves against this type of knowledge, traditions, attitudes, and hardness of heart. Should additional worksheets be needed, use the Word Study Supplemental Worksheet. When you have completed the main body section of your study, you are ready to bring your study to a conclusion. Often the novice Bible student is apprehensive of this section because they are confronted with not knowing what to say or how to summarize their research. You should have no problem writing a thorough conclusion if you prepared a thorough main body. In simple terms, your conclusion should be a simple reiteration of your meditations in the main body. Correlate your Bible research with your introductory thesis statement. During this coalition, 
take time to look for similarities and differences and for cause and effect. When your conclusion is finished, you should have answered your introductory thesis statement. In fact, you should begin compiling and directing your study project toward its conclusion with the first pen strokes of your introduction. Your conclusion is the goal line of your project. You cannot score until you cross the line. In other words, you cannot win a race until you cross the finish line. Any experienced runner realizes that he or she must picture the finish line in his or her mind at the sound of the starting gun in order to win the race. When a runner pictures the finish line, the runner knows the proper pace, energy and effort that will be needed to finish the race. Remember, the study of God's Word is not the occasional experience. Our study of the Word of God must be a lifestyle of seeking the Lord. You cannot enter deeper dimensions of Bible study without a lifestyle of prayer. In fact, the life of prayer has a greater application because without prayer, your Bible study will be an empty head knowledge exercise in futility. Prayer and the ministry of the Word was the power source of the New Testament church. These two factors must also become the power source of your life. You may locate copies of the Microsoft Word documents being presented in this episode on this DVD in the folder entitled video underscore TS. In order to access these documents, your computer must have a DVD-ROM drive. Should your computer not have a DVD drive, then you may download a self-extracting zip file from my personal website at jmbd.com. As I have previously stated, I have discovered over the years that the true wealth of the Bible is hidden in the expanded application of the original languages. With practice, you will find the word study format easy and fun because it helps you organize your study time. With this format, you do not have to complete a research project in one setting. You can back away from your project and return at a later time and resume right where you ended during the previous session. Try conducting a Hebrew or Greek word study. I think you will like the ease of use found in this format.